Tonight on Let's Talk About Health, we want to talk to you about how well you can hear or not. How loud is too loud? We find out about hearing ranges and what they're doing to our ears. Also, we have a story about a man who had sudden profound hearing loss that occurred while he was in an online meeting. We'll have his story and more right here on Let's, Let's Talk, talk about, about Health. health. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be talking all about hearing. So, Kat, how how good are you at picking up sounds? I feel like my sense of hearing is really good. Uh -huh. And as radio DJs, actually, we're meant to have a really good sense of hearing. I mean, that's what one would assume, right? Well, yeah. let's uh, let's go ahead and ask our guests what they think. We do have Dr. Barry Tan. We've got Charlie Go and Yasmin Chang. Come on out, guys. Hello, out, guys. guys. Hello. Hello. Come welcome, on in. Welcome. Thank, you. Thank you so much for inviting. Hi, Dr. Hi. Barry. Hi, nice Dr. to Hi. nice to see Hi. you. Hello. 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 So we're talking about hearing today. Do you guys have any have, issues? With yeah, hearing? hearing problems. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm still okay. Okay. Still young. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's only the older ones that have a problem. No, I'm just kidding. Uh. So it happened uh, some time back. It was very very strange. Nothing happened to trigger it. Just one day, as I'm talking. Suddenly, it feels as if someone's doing this to my ear. As I'm mm. talking, it opens, closed, opens, closed. It's like somebody's playing with my ear. Mm. And it was so annoying. It threw me off because, like, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, right. then, yes. then it went away after years. Uh, most likely what happened was that uh, your middle ear chamber wasn't ventilating so well. Aww. And so it vacillated. So it requires ventilation through a tube that connects from the middle ear to the back of your nose. It's called the eustachian tube. The most common triggers for eustachian tube dysfunction has to do with nasal allergies as well as nasal oh. problems. Therefore, when you have these eustachian tube dysfunctions, you get these muffled sensations. Yeah. So, uh, what, what causes hearing loss? There are two main types of hearing loss. Mm. There's something called conductive hearing loss, where the transmission of those sound waves gets affected. So, simple things like even an impacted earwax, can cause hearing loss. It's like okay. putting a earplug in your that ears. That would be conductive. That would be conductive. Or having fluid accumulating behind your eardrum. As a general principle, a conductive hearing loss is very fixable. Okay. Right. Not so fixable types mm. are the sensory neural hearing loss. And that's where there's a problem either in the sense organ, which is known as the cochlea. If I could just use this sure. teaching model. Yeah. So the cochlea is located very deep within the skull and it's encased in bone. And this is the sense organ. In order for sound waves to reach this sense organ, it's got to pass through the external ear and the middle ear to transmit the vibrations to this inner ear. In sensory neural hearing loss, there's a problem in the conversion of that mechanical energy from vibrations into electrical energy. It has to connect to this cochlear nerve, the hearing nerve. So you could have a problem either in the cochlea or in the hearing nerve as well. Does mm. that naturally happen as we age or is that something that you cause damage? Yeah, you damaged. It's actually very prevalent among the elderly. So ah. there is a very large proportion of elderly patients and the population which naturally would have degenerative hearing loss. There's a medical term for that. It's called presbyacusis. It's in the same way that as we age, mm. we also develop long sightedness, which mm. is presbyopia, which is a sign of aging. Lao hua. Lao hua. Is there anything that we can do to mitigate this? <laughs> the sad Just truth is there's, nope. there's nothing. No! <laughs> so uh, we want to ha develop good hearing habits. Definitely we don't want to develop bad hearing habits which then damage the ears more. Taking uh, substances that you're not familiar with, sort of uh, medications or whatever, it's best to check with your doctor whether really? those medications have a little bit of side effect on your hearing as Even well. Even if the medication has got no relation whatsoever to... Yes. Oh, yes. You could be taking certain types of antibiotics, oh. right? like gentamicin. It's one of those antibiotics that does cause uh, hearing loss. Oh, yes, wow. It's a side effect. Certain but not permanently, right? Permanently. Oh, permanently. Yes. <laughs> Write okay. it down. Okay. What is it called? How do you spell it again? <laughs> gentamicin. gentamicin. Hey, so I have a story that actually I'd like to share. Um, because I did uh, go visit Dr. Barry Tan at his office because I've been experiencing some constant tinnitus over the last uh, month. So I went to Dr. Barry's... Oh, don't even joke. Don't you dare <laughs> even joke. So uh, we went to Dr. Barry Tan's office and uh, he did a hearing test. Well, Mike, uh, we've heard a lot uh, today. I think I've got enough to understand your problem. Uh, but uh, what will be helpful for us will be if we were to check your hearing. 
So I will send you upstairs now to my hearing center. Uh, in the hearing center, you will perform something called a pure tone audiogram. So these are the earphones. I will be putting them in for you. Uh, I'll be presenting you some sound through these earphones. All okay. I need you to do when you hear the sound, just help me to push the button. This will allow me to determine whether you do have hearing loss. And if you do have hearing loss, then not just the severity of the hearing loss, but also the pattern of the hearing loss. Okay, we are done. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that was interesting. How was it? Okay. It's it's tough to hear those sounds. Because They're so low. It was quite good. Yeah. Cool. Results were quite well, good. Well, okay. I'm uh, looking forward to getting back in the studio and seeing what the actual results are. Okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. So, Dr. Barry Town, what are we talking about here? You've got perfect hearing. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Really? Mike, exactly. If you look at this uh, audiogram. It's a graphical representation of his hearing. You can see two lines. You can see the red colored line, which represents his hearing thresholds on his right ear. And the blue colored line represents his hearing thresholds on the left ear. You can see that it's a representation of a hearing according to the frequencies which are presented to him. So you can see from 250 hertz to 8,000 hertz from left to right, he is able to hear between 5 decibels to 20 decibels on both ears. And the normal hearing thresholds is to be able to hear sounds which are really soft between zero to 20 decibels. So Mike actually has normal hearing. He's got perfect hearing. Sometimes I do get like ringing sounds. Oh. But it comes and goes. Yes. It's like And then after a while, it's, it goes away. A Maybe few like a couple of seconds, oh. like 30 seconds. Yep. Yeah. Those are very short-lived tinnitus. <gasps> Tinnitus is a perception of sound which is generated within the natural body. It's yeah. not generated in the external environment. And we all have a natural level baseline of electrical activity in our ears. Our ears are actually living organs. And we discover that their cochleas are actually sending out tiny signals of sound all the time. How we sometimes perceive these sounds mm. has got to do with our brains. Our brains develop these little gates which block out unwanted sound. You can imagine these high-pitched rings, they aren't wanted sounds. So the brain learns to cap it or to block it out. But for some unexplained reasons at times, these blocks either get lifted or the activity of the baseline electrical activity increases. And that perception of the ring or the sounds becomes very much in your awareness. So oh. it can happen in one year, it can happen in both years. Mm. What we usually advise is habituation therapies, uh, therapies to get the brain to accommodate as well as get used to the presence of the sound mm. so that it's not so much in your face or in your mind literally all the time. It's not always at your forefront of awareness. Yeah. So it fades into the background and you can carry on life as what you used to. Tinnitus may be present, but if you've reached a stage of habituation where you've gotten used to it, you're no longer aware of it. Unless a person actually were to ask you and remind you, a friend who was uh, supporting you during your difficult time mm. says, bro, you were mentioning you had tinnitus last time, are you still having it? Yeah. And then you pay attention and you say, "Yeah." now that you mention it, yeah, it's still there. Uh... But you're not aware of it mm -hmm. anymore. You can actually train the brain. Yes, there's a therapy called masking therapy, which is often employed, uh, where basically you bring sound from the environment uh, so that you don't pay so much attention to your internal noises. Mm. And the brain will have to select out which sounds it wants to hear. And preferentially, it tends to prefer hearing environmental sounds. Mm. And so it fades internal noises to the background. Like ASMR. Mm. Yeah. Does that work? ESMR, yes. I don't think so. <laughs> A little mukbang, take my mind yeah. off it. Yeah. Alrighty, yeah. Dr. Barry, thank you so much. Time for a break. When we come back, we're going to discuss everyday sounds and whether those are good for our ears. Stay with us. And welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. All right, it is game time. We're gonna play a hearing game and it's gonna be those girls over there versus us boys over here. Let's have some fun. That's right. And each team, we have eight picture cards and all we'll have to do is basically rate them from softest to loudest. Let's see how we go. We have 30 seconds. Are all you right. guys ready? Yeah. Yep. 
Your time starts now. Okay. okay. Yeah, Rock and roll. Yeah. This one. Oh, is there uh, like here? A lunch? A bit higher? Heavy traffic. Am I in the car or out of the car? <laughs> anyway, out of the car. Out of the, out oh, of the car. Okay. okay. Heavy between? traffic. Uh, between maybe. Go in between. Okay, I think it's been more than 30. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, okay. If I can Gina hit it. All right, go. Come on. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got it. All right. All I can say is, we are so neat. <laughs> look at your ball. <laughs> Classic. It's about <laughs> so, right. Yes. The... Okay, just look at those magnets. Whoa. Dr. Tan, yeah. what are we yes. talking about here? Okay. Are... Okay. So maybe we start with the girls first. Okay. Okay. They've got it uh, mostly right. Okay. And I will start oh. first actually with the loudest. Uh, so gunshots and aeroplanes, definitely these are extremely loud sounds. Mm. Jet planes, uh, from a distance, they are usually at about 120 decibels. A gunshot is maybe a bit louder. Wow. About 130 to 140 decibel. I guess you were thinking in practical sense, the jet planes are a ways away. Uh, I was yeah. thinking if you're on if the... If you're on the tarmac, yeah. to totally. So on the tarmac, it will still be about 120 decibels. Mm. So right. jet plane is less than wow. gunshot? Is actually less than a gunshot. Oh. And yes. same as rock concerts? No, rock concerts is probably just a little bit below a jet plane. So probably in the region of about 110 decibels or so. Wow. Okay, that's where we were, right in between, right? <laughs> Looks like the guys know the rock concerts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hair dryer, vacuum okay. cleaner. Okay, I Yeah, I think we have it on the same one. Yes, maybe, right? roughly yeah. about 90 decibels. I would say heavy traffic is correct. Maybe not hair dryers okay. and the vacuum cleaners. Again, so we're I think both it's probably, probably around 70 to 80 decibels. In terms of alarm clocks, yes. So the traditional sort of ringing bell alarm clocks that would probably be in the region of about uh, 70 to 80 decibels. That is mm. very loud, those alarm clocks. Yes. Uh, normal conversational voice isn't so soft. It's not 30 decibels. That's actually the volume of a whisper. 30 decibels. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason why I put it here is because this is a conversation that was held in a library. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we discussed yeah. it. Yes. Yes. We discussed it. Very yeah. discreet. So what is the healthy hearing range for our ears? I mean, my, my phone tells me it's under 80 something? Or... Yes, so it should be under 70 decibels. So probably if you wanted to listen for a prolonged period, yeah. like for over an hour, you should keep it to below 70 decibels. Below 70, yeah. okay. But if you wanted to listen to really loud, out intense sounds, try to keep it even brief, even uh, more brief to maybe about 15 minutes or less. Since Dr. Barry, you're here, I also have a question because um, it happened to me quite a few times because I do quite a bit of water sports. I'm yes. diving recently as well. And for example, whitewater rafting, fall into the river, it happened. And also diving, can't equalize, come up. And then water gets logged in the year. How do you stop that from happening or how do you... Remove it. Yes. I know, I know. It just has to do this. <laughs> yeah, you must jump right? on one yeah, leg, is it? Jump. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's a technique. No, seriously? No, but uh, seriously, yes. You try to get the water out first by physical, mechanical sort of uh, gravity. So you do try to uh, get it to pulsate out. But uh, oftentimes you're not able to do that because there's surface tension. So water will stick. And you can imagine the ear canal as a small tunnel. It's got plenty of surfaces to stick, mm. including the eardrum. Now, the safest way is actually uh, not to put anything into the ears. No rolling up of your tissue paper into a tiny little shaft. Yeah. You know, The safest way is actually to use a hairdryer. Uh, put the hairdryer approximately one foot away. Set it at a warm temperature, mm. not at the highest power, mm. and just blow have your ear facing down so that hopefully as it dislodges a little bit of evaporation, some of that surface tension loses and then it drains out. Uh, I was doing a story on radio the other day about this, this room that's the quietest room in the world. And what would that be like being, being in an absolutely noise-free Deafening room? silence. Yeah. That's what that is. It's a chance to survive because uh, it's not entirely a comfortable experience right? without any sound at all. We're just so used to sound in yeah. our environment. When you are placed in a really, really quiet mm. environment, first, you may hear your own tinnitus, your own internal noises. Right. Right. That's number one. You can even hear your own breathing and yeah. your, maybe your own heartbeat as mm. at times. <laughs> so it can be a very mind-bending experience to be in a really quiet and sound-free environment. So, yeah, it's a chance to survive because if you get past that, you really appreciate that there is baseline noise all the time around us. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, man. I yeah. wish I was back to regular baseline noise. All right, we're going for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to share a story about a man who suddenly lost hearing in one ear. Stay with us.
I previously had a perfect hearing, but about one and a half years ago, I kind of uh, suddenly lost hearing on one side. I was actually having a Zoom meeting. Suddenly, I had this uh, loud, loud ringing in my left ear. A couple of minutes, I realised that that was the only thing I could hear. I could not hear anything besides that ringing. After I went to the ENT clinic and they did tests and I was diagnosed with something called a sudden occurrence of a hearing loss in one year. I was naturally worried that it was some underlying disease that caused this. My biggest fear was losing my hearing on the other side. Underwent all the treatments that were available. After about uh, two to three weeks, I realised that my hearing was uh, not going to come back. Of course, uh, with any loss, there's a little bit of grief. The most uh, handicap uh, situations I have will be when somebody is trying to talk to me on the deaf side and I'm unable to hear it. It's frustrating for both me and the person who is trying to talk to me. I also went through that step-by-step uh, -step process. So the first thing I got was this thing called the cross device, which is a hearing aid. Um, unfortunately, it was only useful in certain situations and it made other situations worse. It did not solve the problem of the ringing in the ears. I also tried a bone conduction hearing aid. You have to wear the bone conduction hearing aid on your head and it kind of interfered with uh, some of the caps that I need to wear at work. It was very uncomfortable. Therefore, I went to explore the possibility of a cochlear implant surgery. Gabriel came to me as a second opinion. He had already started some treatment from his earlier ENT. Gabriel decided that he wanted to achieve two main aims. He wanted to control his tinnitus and he wanted better overall hearing. He had actually undergone several hearing aid trials with different technologies, but each of those trials essentially still afforded him one-sided hearing. So he didn't have stereo bilateral hearing. And there was only one solution that could offer that, and that's cochlear implant technology. It actually restores hearing in the deafened ear so that he could get two-sided and two-ear hearing. And there are benefits with two-year hearing. Number one, we are able to localise sounds better. And number two, we are able to hear better in noisy environments. And lastly, for cochlear implant technology, it's able to quieten and stabilise the tinnitus and in the vast majority of patients, almost eliminate it entirely. The tinnitus has greatly reduced in intensity when the implant is on. If I concentrate very, very hard, maybe I can hear it in the background. It has gotten much, much better. And the implant has helped re-establish the balance between the left side and the right side. Sometimes when I'm alone in an environment, I actually really forget that I am single-sided deaf. I think it's good to know the options that are out there. I think there are many different ways of hearing rehabilitation now, so you don't have to let uh, single-sided deafness uh, limit the number of things you can do. Wow. Wow. How do you do a cochlear implant? It requires surgery, and uh, basically there's a cut that's made behind your ear. It's not a very large cut, it's mm -hmm. maybe about four centimetres long. And that, that allows us to expose the skull bone, which houses many of the ear structures, and then we can insert the active electrode of the cochlear implant. So this is what we're inserting. If I'll show just this particular uh, teaching model, we have an internal component which is made up of a magnet, which allows this to communicate with the external speech processor. And then there is a digital processing hub sends information down this long shaft and into a working electrode, which is actively implanted into the cochlea because within the cochlea, there are actually the nerve endings of the hearing nerve. So we are stimulating the hearing nerve endings within the cochlea. That's amazing. Patients basically don't require a functioning cochlea. They just need to have a functioning hearing nerve. Wow. And so we are just stimulating these hearing nerve endings and it conducts to the hearing brain. The rest of the, of the pathway is working perfectly fine. So it's, it's really amazing technology to restore hearing. The technology is, is wonderful and it's giving people a chance to hear when they couldn't. But let's take it back to the start. What causes single-sided deafness and can it be prevented? Mm. Uh, in Gabriel's case, it was idiopathic. That's a fancy name for saying that we don't know the underlying reason. There are mm -hmm. speculations. And the most commonly accepted uh, speculation or conjecture is a viral 
uh, origin. So there was a viral infection that infected and inflamed the cochlea. And that's part of the inner ear. And it caused the cochlea to lose its ability to function. So that probably is one of the most common causes in adults. Mm -hmm. The other common causes in adults, we had talked a little bit about uh, presbyacusis, which is age-related degeneration. There are severe types of age-related degeneration where the entire uh, cochlea across all the frequencies fail to function. So you have a significant, severe drop in your hearing. You could also have a tumour that presses on the hearing nerve mm. and therefore you lose the hearing. Unfortunately, in such situations, a cochlear implant may not be a suitable uh, option for you and you may need to consider a different type of hearing implant called an auditory brainstem implant. You can't just get rid of the tumour? You can, you can. And now when you remove the tumour, thankfully the tumour uh, may no longer press on the hearing nerve and you can put in a cochlear implant at the same time of tumour removal to activate the hearing system. Yeah, but what's really quite disturbing is the sudden... Mm. The yeah, sudden you never loss. know when it hits you. Yes. So uh, that's, exactly. that's what I'm curious yeah. about. If if you suddenly you know start losing your hearing, would would you know? You would have that depleted sense of hearing, sure. But is it something you would be conscious about if it's over time? If it is gradual, yeah. you may miss it initially. But when it uh, reaches a state where there is a significant asymmetry in terms of your hearing, you would perceive it. Mm. One side would definitely hear poorer than the other. It's usually out of one side. Generally, most hearing loss is gradual and progressive and bilateral, mm. symmetrical. Mm. So if you lose it generally in one year, it's far more perceptible than if you were mm. to lose it generally in both right. years. Okay. Like if you have many uh, members of family, yeah. Yeah. Uh, many of them are in de denial. They'll say, I, I, I have perfect hearing. Why are you... Why are you Making a big fuss, mm. you That's know? That's because it's going down together. It's yep. doing down together and they don't realise that uh, everyone is accommodating that particular uh, member speaking of the family. Louder, They're right. speaking louder. They accommodate the fact that he's got to turn the TV volume louder. Okay. Uh, they don't realise it, but it's actively happening. And in that case, is you have to seek treatment immediately, right? Yes, but unfortunately, there is a percentage of patients who don't recover their hearing despite immediate treatment. Charlie, you look like you have so many questions <laughs> to ask after everything that uh, Dr. Barry Yeah, Barry I'll sit said. down with Dr. Barry one-on-one -on -one after this. <laughs> Free consultation. We'll have coffee. Yes. It's so sobering, you know. Yeah, it, it really is, is right? right? The loss of hearing mm. doesn't just affect the listener yeah. or the patient. It affects people around them. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if you restore should... hearing, you not just restore that particular patient, you restore relationships, relationships yeah. and the people around them as well. That's yeah. right. You show appreciation to your ears, day. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Take care of your Sayang ears, your guys. Health. Thank you so much, Dr. Barry Tan, for uh, scaring the living daylights out of all yeah. of us here. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. It's his pleasure. It is. And uh, Yasmin, thank you so much for coming. Charlie, you guys have been great. Yes. Thank you. Sorry? Thank you for having us. Sorry? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Great. Get checked. Been great. Thank you, Yasmin. <laughs> Cheesy. All right, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about L. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, then make sure to catch our online series called We Need to Talk About This on MeWatch. This is actually in a teacher who persisted in teaching during a cough and a cold. So when you have a cold or sore throat, you're not supposed to use your voice at all? Absolutely. Thank you.